There's a fact that good engineering doesn't just come to companies who do things for a long time. It comes to companies that do things smartly. SpaceX is the brightest example of this with their latest generation engine, the Raptor 3. Rocket engines have always been a key challenge and a decisive factor in the success of any space project. And SpaceX nailed it. The way SpaceX upgrades everything on their engines has truly made the entire industry thrilling. Let's find out everything in today's episode. When we look at the evolution of SpaceX's Raptor engine through three generations, we can clearly see SpaceX's design philosophy at work, a set of the principles of eliminate, combine, rearrange, and simplify. Raptor 3 isn't a product of fixing errors from previous versions, as Raptor 2 has already flown and proven its impressive reliability. It's the result of a methodical process of learning and improvement. Through Raptor 1 and 2, SpaceX identified what could be removed, what needed to stay, and how to simplify the system while still delivering, even enhancing, performance. I've made some videos about the incredible specifications and appearance of the Raptor 3, which you can find on my channel. And in those videos, I analyze that what makes the Raptor 3 so powerful, with a thrust of 280 tons force, is the combustion chamber pressure. 350 bar is a record-breaking number, higher than any rocket engine in the history of this industry. The combustion chamber walls can reach temperatures up to around 3,500 degrees Celsius, far beyond what any metal can endure. That's why the engine needs effective cooling. I've spoken a lot about Raptor's regenerative cooling technology and SpaceX's advanced 3D printing methods. Now it's time we dive even deeper into these innovations. In the aerospace industry, many companies often claim they don't have the time to invest in manufacturing tools and processes. Take Boeing, with its complex network of subcontractors spread across the U.S. and globally, or United Launch Alliance, ULA, which opts to outsource major components, like the BE-4 engine from Blue Origin. Outsourcing can sometimes be the right choice in the short term. But for many companies, it's become a default route, a path that's easy, but lacks long-term vision. SpaceX, on the other hand, invests heavily in manufacturing technology and material science. This commitment has enabled the Raptor engine to set new performance standards in the rocket industry. SpaceX proudly owns some of the world's most advanced 3D printing technology and is one of the main investors in Velo 3D, a leading company in metal additive manufacturing. If I'm not mistaken, SpaceX has adopted Directed Energy Deposition, DED, a process well-suited for producing large combustion chambers and nozzles with intricate cooling channels. The key advantage of this technology is its ability to create bimetallic components, allowing for the combination of different materials within a single monolithic structure. This enhances both thermal conductivity and mechanical strength, optimizing performance on all fronts. Unlike the rest of Starship and the Super Heavy Booster hardware, which simply uses stainless steel for nearly every part, from the rocket body to the grid fins, and the hot staging ring. The Raptor engine is a complex beast that demands a more refined approach in material selection and combination. So do you know what the Raptor is made of? The main combustion chamber is crafted from a copper alloy with integrated cooling channels built directly into its walls. Copper's high thermal conductivity allows it to dissipate heat efficiently, even under the extreme temperatures of combustion. To further enhance durability and heat resistance, an Inconel layer coats the combustion chamber. The nozzle, along with much of the piping and turbines, is also made from Inconel, an advanced nickel-chromium austenitic superalloy. Known for its exceptional corrosion resistance, Inconel maintains its superior mechanical properties even at extremely high temperatures. Its tensile strength, bending resistance, and fracture toughness make it the ideal choice not only for rocket engines, but also for other demanding aerospace applications. The point is, sometimes, what's already available just isn't enough for SpaceX. They are famous for their technological logical independence. Elon Musk has revealed that SpaceX developed two groundbreaking material lines, SX-300 and SX-500, essentially upgraded versions of Inconel superalloys. According to Musk, SX-300 and soon SX-500, kind of a modern version of Inconel superalloys, high strength at temperature, extreme oxidation resistance, needed for approximately 800 atmosphere, hot, oxygen-rich turbopump on Raptor rocket engine. Extremely strong. That's why SpaceX is confident in creating such durable and powerful machines. While it's not officially confirmed whether SX-500 has been incorporated into Raptor 3 or is set for the upcoming Raptor 4, one thing's for certain. SpaceX has never stopped advancing material and manufacturing technologies. Because what they are aiming for next is mass production and automation. The directed energy deposition, DED technology that SpaceX is applying, is still in the refinement stage. It is not yet perfect. The ability to control the surface roughness inside the cooling channels is not yet fully optimized. 
This requires SpaceX to perform post-processing steps to achieve optimal finish. SpaceX has produced at least 569 Raptor 2 engines, and their fastest production rate is one engine per day, an unprecedented speed in this industry. But SpaceX just can't stop there. Simply leading the industry isn't enough. They need to meet the actual demands of the Starship program. Even at a rate of one engine per day, it still takes over a month to produce enough engines for a single booster, which isn't fast enough. SpaceX is now combining 3D printing and casting in their engine production process. Take a look at some of the images where they've cast parts of this engine. Elon Musk has a lot of experience with casting technology. After all, he runs Tesla. The advanced casting technology that's proven so effective in Tesla's car production has massive potential when applied to the Raptor engine production process. I'd bet on some serious technology sharing between Musk's two companies to ramp up production speed and achieve major economic efficiency. As you can see, many companies and scientists tend to rely on existing materials and technologies, combining them to make things work. But SpaceX is a pioneer in enhancing and optimizing everything, even when it's already performing well. That's exactly why, before SpaceX, the aerospace industry was notoriously bulky and insanely expensive, largely dominated by companies doing the same thing for a long, long time. And soon, SpaceX will unveil the Raptor 4. After remarkable strides in design optimization over the first three generations, it's hard to imagine how SpaceX might simplify this engine further or what else they could improve. I believe that when SpaceX debuts this engine, it will far exceed what almost any of us could have anticipated. But one thing is certain, the cost of building the engine will drop significantly and production speed will increase. Currently, the production cost of a Raptor 2 engine has been optimized down to around $1 million, comparable to a Merlin engine and already an incredible number in the industry. But with the improvements in manufacturing processes and the design of Raptor 3 and eventually Raptor 4, the cost could be reduced to around $250,000 for a reusable engine, a truly game-changing price. Here, let's compare this to the RS-25 engines used on NASA's Space Launch System, SLS rocket. Each RS-25 engine costs $145 million, 580 times the projected cost of a Raptor 4. And here's the kicker. SLS uses four RS-25 engines per launch, all of which are lost after each mission. The total cost for these four engines alone reaches $580 million per launch. While traditional programs have focused on optimizing performance without much concern for cost, SpaceX has proven it's possible to achieve both high performance and low cost. In fact, the Raptor engine has truly marked a breakthrough in rocket industry history, thanks to its full flow stage combustion cycle design. Before Raptor, only two engines had ever successfully tested this technology, the Soviet RD-270 and the U.S. Integrated Powerhead Demonstrator. However, Neither of these engines made it past the testing phase to become a fully operational flight-ready product. In conventional engines, liquid oxygen and kerosene are injected directly into the combustion chamber. This process requires extremely complex injector designs that break down and disperse the liquid droplets into tiny particles, ensuring complete combustion before the hot gases are expelled. Raptor takes a completely different approach. In the full-flow staged combustion cycle, all fuel and oxidizer are partially burned as they move through the engine's components. This means that by the time they reach the main combustion chamber, these elements are already in a gaseous state, a feature that offers huge performance advantages. Mixing gaseous fuel and oxidizer is much faster and more efficient than mixing liquids, resulting in a far more complete burn. With all fuel and oxidizer flowing through the engine, the required pressures are significantly lower than those in traditional liquid fueled systems. Coupled with higher flow rates and lower operating temperatures, the engine endures less mechanical stress, a key factor in SpaceX's reusability strategy. This not only extends the engine's lifespan but also significantly reduces maintenance and operational costs. 